Expo in round three of the All-Ireland Senior Championship Football Qualifiers. Throw in at 5pm exclusively live here on TV3 and also on the web at tv3.ie forward slash GAA. Well, the Pussycat Dolls have gone to Fitzgerald Stadium in Killarney. The underdogs have come here today to Tralee to take on the mighty Kerry, who have been in the last five All-Ireland Finals, but who are not going particularly well this year. Peter Canavan and David Brady are with us as ever to offer their analysis. And Peter, if we can start with you. We were done last week up in Longford, saw Kerry struggle very badly in the second half. There's all sorts of rumours about dissent in the camp. Could it be that the hunger isn't there anymore for this Kerry team after five successive All-Ireland Finals? Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. That they seem very flat at the minute for, for some reason, and, and maybe that is understandable, uh, the fact that they've been contesting so many All-Ireland Finals, and one maybe has to expect that. Um, you have to look at uh, previous years, the teams have won the All-Ireland. Somewhere along the line, there's been a, a flat spot. Uh, thrown not, This time last year, Throne were struggling. Um, uh, the difficulty beating Westmead, the down beat them, the difficulty in beating Mayo, yet uh, they, they persisted uh, and the quality players um, was there. It's very similar in this carry. If you look at that panel, they're a very strong panel. So I believe that if they work hard enough, if they get uh, physically fit, uh, and I think the hunger will, will inevitably return and that Kerry still will be a force to be reckoned with before the year's out. Now, David, today they're playing against the Sligo team, which won the Connacht Championship two years ago, won Division 4 of the National League this year before losing to Galway in the Championship. How well equipped is this Sligo team to make a real challenge to Kerry today? I think the Sligo team that's out there today suffered from a hangover from 2007 for the whole of 2008 Championship, and they didn't do themselves any justice. Uh, I think what they've done, and I know they're one team that didn't adhere to the pre-Christmas training band because they trained hard to get into the league and get a good stand in the league. They did very well in the league. And they have Kevin Walsh as a manager who's been there before, and he's, gi he's, he's given these guys the foresight to say, right, guys, let's go and make a push. The one thing I would say is Sligo over the years have always done well against big teams and qualifiers, and today could be a chance for them. OK, well, let's have a look now at the head-to-heads on the two teams here and Peter we start with the Kerry defence because there are changes here but to start Tommy Griffin remaining at full back are you surprised by that decision? Yeah I'm still surprised at it. he played a wing half back throughout the National League and played very well for them uh, he was through on centre back against Cork struggled he struggled at full back last week again so he's getting another chance there but don't be surprised to see Mike McCarthy, um, who's been recalled for today's match, dropping back in and playing full back. Because we'll have a look at the half back line as well, because there are other changes in that half back line. Aidan O'Mahony coming in as well. Are you surprised they haven't persisted with Mark O'Shea at centre back after one opportunity last week? Yeah, well, I think Mark O'Shea is very capable of, of, of playing centre back, but they need him back there, and, that, and that's why they, they, they're playing him. David Kelly, will, he'd probably end up marking him, who's very elusive, very fast, and the main threat up front. And what about Eamon O'Hara? Would you expect him to stay at full forward for Sligo? Well, in, in the, the previous match in, in the Connacht Championship, um, Brehane actually went and played as a sweeper, played as an extra half-back, and Eamon O'Hara went out to, to the half-forward lane. So either way, he'll either play as a third midfielder or play out in the half-forward lane for Sligo today. Now, David, the midfields have come up already. A very experienced Kerry midfield against an inexperienced Sligo midfield. How hard is it going to be for them today? It's going to be very hard for Sligo, but, you know, the one thing is uh, this su supposedly inexperienced midfield pairing of Mullen and Taylor did very well against a, a Galway parent that had to be rejigged for them to come back and just win it in the end. Like for me, the biggest mistake that Jack O'Connor made, and probably Jarrah himself this year, was he didn't play in the National League and he didn't do the hard winter training. The older you get, I think, the harder you have to train. And Dara, he needs to play today to get 90 minutes or 70 minutes under his belt. Now, let's, David, stay with you and we move to the half forward line. Paul Galvin back after suspension. We were there the day he got sent off against Cork. How much pressure is there going to be on him now for the rest of the championship to keep the head? Um, there's going to be a lot of focus on him. And you know what? I think some uh, the opposition is going to actually delve into that. Uh, Jack O'Connor guaranteed to put a hand on Paul's shoulder and say, Paul, we need you for 70 minutes. And it's vital that he stays on the pitch because, to be honest, which I, do, I think nice guys can't, don't win football games. And Paul Gavin is, is a guy that wins football games with Curry by doing the hard and physical work. The half forward line against, I think, a very small but fast and, and uh, attacking like half back line for Sligo. Now, the full forward line for Kerry, or maybe we should say there's t three lines of two in the Kerry attack, but the absence of Kieran Donaghy, Peter, why do they seem to struggle without him? Well, you'd think that they have a ready-made replacement in, in Tommy Walsh, another big target man in there. And I think Walsh has come you know, in for some uh, unfair criticism uh, because people expect him to be another Kieran Donaghy. Um, the fact of the matter is he's still a cub, he's still learning the tricks of the trade. And I think if you give him time, he will be every bit as good uh, as Kieran Donaghy. 
but uh, there's no doubt that Gooch in, in particular suffers when, when, when Donahue's not there so it'll be interesting to see how, how Gooch and uh, Walsh perform today Now we hear there may be a doubt over Neil Ewing we'll hear more about that in a little while but just have a look at the subs here David uh, Kerry have lots of experienced subs but why are they not using some of the younger players more often? And that would be a question so was why happened to use the likes of Mark McCarthy last week against Longford and why, why they start him today like the younger guys I'd be looking at is like David Moore and I, I was very impressed with Barry John Walsh as well um, for one David Moore was man of the match in the National League game against Dublin this year to have <coughs> the likes of Aidan Shea but a big plus for them is Ty Canelli starting at 31 today he's going to that means he's in the squad and he's going to come on at some stage Slag on the other hand have five of their um 2007 Connacht champions on the bench and for them that's going to be vital that when things go bad like the likes of Sean Davey and Patrick Norton can come in or score or show up the defence You said earlier Peter that you expect this Kerry team to show the hunger again for it to come back in the way it happened with Tyrone last year but is that guaranteed? Could it be that there's too many miles on the clock with too many of these Kerry players? Well uh, you, you can look at it another way and that there's a lot of experience there um, but uh, the one thing that I can't figure out is, is that there's so many of these players actually seem to be you know, playing well during the National League. Parik Reedy, Aidan O'Shea, you know, David Moran. And yet now you want to come to the Championship and you'd expect these players to be pushing the established players and to be getting a chance. Jack O'Connor has reverted back to you know, the likes of Mike McCarthy. He's had to bring him back out of the wilderness. A player who two or three years ago there were doubts you know, regarding his, his pace and yet he's, he's playing him now in such a pivotal position. So I think from a Kerry point of view, that's worrying. OK, well, one of the players who has been doing well for Kerry this year is a player that we will be focusing on. And comes back a year after and talked about, you know, the differences in Kerry football and how they're north versus south and it's me against them. That's what I got off the book. A lot of, opinion, a lot of people got the same thing. You know, and there's talk is that the Gaelic boys and the, the, the Drummond boys are, you know, on a different wavelength. I think Darrow O'Shea needs to play. Um, I think Jack O'Connor has to have him playing because realistically there's no players out there that is good enough to replace him when he's fit. You know, he's not fit at the minute. Peter, but there, but there is a lot of rumour going around that not all is well within this Kerry camp, that not everybody is pulling together, that the discipline wasn't going great last year even and hasn't improved this year even when Jack O'Connor has recovered. Now, is that just the type of talk you get around Kerry when results aren't going well or might there be a bit more to it? Well, what was it that Paddy said about the Kerry supporters? Um, there's a very high expectation here in Kerry, and if they're not beating the legs of Longford, if not beating their neighbours Cork and if they're not beating the likes of Longford by 10 or 11 points then they're criticised um, so I think that comes from, from living a, and being a Kerry, a Kerry footballer the Kerry players have got, have got used to that high expectations um, but uh, the, the question marks uh, about the selection policy I would have to say re reverts around the chopping and change and that there doesn't seem to be you know, players have been chopped and changed and played in different positions, and we see that we see that today again. So I think that's creating uh, but is that a sign confusion of the strength? and uncertainty. But is that a sign of the strength and depth that Kerry have that they have so many players for so many positions? I would have thought that, that they do have strength and depth, and I said at the start of the year after watching a lot of their younger players on, on the bench, and look at the younger players they have: Anthony Maher, who is very good, David Moore, and Parik Reedy, Aidan O'Shea, Paul O'Connor, all exceptionally gifted footballers. Yet we're not seeing much of them in the championship. So does that? Mean maybe they, they don't have the the, the the mentality for championship football. I, I'm not too sure, but the the fact that players like Darrow Shea and Mike McCarthy are coming back and getting starting that would indicate maybe that the current management don't have uh, much time for the younger members of the squad. Like this time last year, and maybe we were all guilty of it. You know, um, Mickey Hart was on their verge of you know being the the ex Tyrone manager. You know, they were talking about Jack O'Connor. But what happens when you progress is that all these guys that you've played and the guys that switched and interchanged have played in championship football up to an hour and quarter final, semi final. And that's where I think the cream comes to the top. You know, and Tyrone did that last year to surprise us all but you know realistically it wasn't a surprise we just didn't see it but how did Tyrone do it Peter I mean what, what example have they set for Kerry not that I'm sure Kerry people would want to take the example from Tyrone but what did you do that meant, meant you came back and were so brilliant in the later part of the Jack, season Jack O'Connor would take example from anybody if they thought they were going to be thrown this year let's make no mistake about that but um, I would say after Tyrone uh, lost the first round of the championship to down last year. The, the, the secret to their success wasn't the fact that Mickey Hart made wholesale changes. Um, the team that went on to win All-Ireland, there were very few changes from the team that lost to down. And it was a case of those players knuckling down themselves. 
Uh, I think that a team meeting and they said, right, I think we can work harder, we can train harder as a team. And the training was stepped up and the players knuckled down and worked very hard. So the powers of persistence paid off in, in, in Throne's case. And with Mickey Hart having ultimate belief in, in the players that he had uh, on his panel. So I think that's maybe something that Jack O'Connor maybe would need to learn and that it's natural enough maybe that players do have a dip in their form um, but the, the players there at his disposal I think are still good enough if they click, if get, get their heads right, get their bodies right they, they're still good enough and skillful enough to be playing at the highest level. What about the issue of free taker on the Kerry team because that's one of the things that has changed with all the chopping and changing and selections as well. Should he have a dedicated free taker, even somebody who's maybe carried on the team just to take the scores from the freeze? Yeah, well opinion and Kerry should be, that's why Brian Sheehan should be playing corner forward. Um, I suppose his weaknesses were exposed to a certain extent against Throne in last year's all Ireland final. But, you know, a player of, of his ability who can score seven or eight points from play, you know, maybe should be starting the game. The other thing that Sean O'Sullivan in there, uh, corner forward today, that's not his normal, that's not his no. natural position. So one assumes that he's only there to, to hit free kicks. But is that also because of this 2-2-2 formation that they're using up front now? Well, the chances is that, that they'll, they'll play Gooch and Tommy Walsh on the inside forward line and, and move Sean O'Sullivan out uh, and maybe Declan O'Sullivan playing a, as two out in front. Um, but still in all, uh, um, I, I do believe he's, he's only there because of his, of his free-taking ability. I don't think he's done enough from play um, to really earn his place in the security. But what about the Gooch? Because last week he was flying when Donaghy was knocking the ball down from. He was getting lots of possession that way. When Donaghy went off, we saw hardly anything of him again. I mean, can you be a top-class corner forward, David, when you're just depending so much on the full forward to win your ball for you? Um, Yes and no. To be honest with you, I would not blame Colm the coach Cooper for last weekend's performance because at the end of the day, if you're a corner forward like Peter Canavan or Colm the coach Cooper, if the ball doesn't come into you, well, you can do damn all without it. I would blame the guys outside. They were running laterally. They were passing over and back. As I said, there was no direct ball going into the coach whatsoever. Like There was no instance where the coach was out man handled or a guy got to the ball in front of him. The ball just didn't simply come in because there was a breakdown in the midfield and there was a breakdown in the Curry half-back line that delivered the ball in. You know, I think that likes of Mike McCarthy now is vital today. If he gets the ball, he needs to deliver it long and fast. And less of this iso pussy, or pussycat does pussyfooting across the pitch, hand passing, need to be direct and give it into the main man who is the coach. OK, well, we'll have lots more to talk about. This match has been delayed. The throw-in has been delayed by 20 minutes because there has been such a large crowd turning up here today. I think Jack O'Connor wouldn't have wanted it, at least unlike the Sligo players. At least his flight wasn't delayed anyway. We'll be back after this short break. That, that Slego have actually stayed out on the pitch. Kerry, I, I went back in whenever they heard the game was delayed, and Slego have, have, have stayed out and are kicking the ball about, and nothing too serious. Which is what Cork did that day down in Parking yeah, Green yeah, as well. That's right, and it yeah. obviously didn't do Cork any harm. You know, the, the big thing is the, the most important time of the game is when the ball is run up by the referee. You know, you can be inside thinking about it too much. The guys are just out kicking ball and relax themselves. And it's, a, it's a good sign from Sligo for the start. OK, I want to call in a couple of the results from qualifiers earlier today because we've already had a couple of matches on. Well, actually, the Kerry team is now coming out onto the pitch, so hopefully that means we will have the throw-in quite soon that the Gardaí have decided that enough people have been able to get into the ground. But just to let you know about a couple of the scores from earlier on today, and uh, in the second round replay, Ross Common finished the job against Wexford, 11 points to 8. So Wexford, after all the heroics last year, getting to the Leinster final and then the All-Ireland semi-final out in the second round of the qualifiers. But what a result from Mick O'Dwyer. Wicklow beating down by a point, 45 in the last minute apparently, to get the victory over down. Yet another Ulster team going down to Wicklow this year. So it's been a great year for Mick O'Dwyer and Wicklow. But let's talk a little bit more about this game and let's talk a little bit more about the Kerry team because, Peter, you've already mentioned about the fact of Mike McCarthy coming back in at centre-half. Do you expect this Kerry team, the defence, to line out as selected? Uh, well, uh, again, uh, the, the central axis of the team, McCarthy and Griffin, uh, I think both players would be maybe more comfortable if, if the, the roles were reversed and if Griffin was out in, at centre-half back. Um, I think what Jack O'Connor is doing, he's not giving these players much time to, to uh, embed in a in a position. Aidan O'Shea came on last week uh, at wing back his first game and didn't play that well and, and he's whipped off, he's, he's on the bench. So uh, I think any, any defence needs settled players and settled positions, especially in the most pivotal positions, full back and centre half. OK, let's get predictions from both of you before we go to our commentary team. David, your prediction? Uh, I'll tell you it's going to be close no matter what people think, but I think it, being here in Austin, uh, in Tralee, in Austin Stacks, I think Curry have too much class, but I would not be surprised if this game goes right to the wire. 
Your prediction, Peter? Yeah, likewise. I really expect Slago to put it up to them here. There's going to be a great atmosphere uh, atmosphere here today in Tralee. But Kerry, I have too many options on the bench and too, too much class up front. So you have to go with a Kerry victory. OK, well, let's go over now to our match commentary team. First, Joe Kernan and Mike Finnerty. Well, with the Pussycat Dolls studying their stuff in Killarney this evening, Championship football returns to Austin Stack Park Tralee as Kerry and Sligo meet in the Championship for only the second time the first being the All-Ireland semi-final of 1975. Will the rematch be worth waiting for? Well, only time will tell. It's been a long week for Jack O'Connor and Kerry with no shortage of debate and speculation after last weekend's unconvincing win up in Longford. It's no real surprise then that O'Connor makes three changes in personnel and carries out surgery on four lines across the field. The half-back line has been reconstructed with Mike McCarthy starting for Kerry for the first time since September 2006. He will wear number six, with Aidan O'Mahony also recalled to the team at number seven. Up front, Paul Galvin returns from suspension and slots back in at right half forward. Sligo manager Kevin Walsh has made one change to the team that beat Tipperary in Semple Stadium seven days ago, with number 20, Charlie Harrison, returning from injury at corner back. Fullback Noel Maguire captain Sligo to the Connacht title two years ago and has handed the task of putting the shackles on big Tommy Walsh. At midfield, newcomer Eugene Mullen partners Tony Taylor from the county champions Eastern Harps and he will need to be at his very best if Sligo are going to make a game of it. In attack, there's no shortage of pace around veteran full forward Eamon O'Hara who won the county's third All-Star back in 2002. Number one, Philip Green. So Jack O'Connor, like the rest of us, has been waiting impatiently for the last uh, 15, 16 minutes. Throw in delayed here at uh, Austin Stack Park due to crowd congestion. There's Kevin Walsh, the man from Killallan in County Galway, turns 40 later in the year. And uh, what an impact he's made in his first season as Sligo manager. Joe Kernan, it's not the first uh, summer that Sligo have made something of an impact in the qualifiers. You've got personal experience of coming up against them back in 2002, and you're expecting a big game from them this evening. Yes, uh, certainly in 2002, uh, they caused a lot of teams headaches, and uh, us in Armagh in particular, uh, we met them in the quarterfinal in Coke Park, and we were actually very, very lucky to survive that day, and it went to a replay in Navin. Uh, the one thing about Sligo that we found out that time and, and ever since, that they seem to be never beaten. They keep coming back. We were six points up on two occasions, and they come back and fought away to the end. And, and they did the same uh, in the last game against against Galway. Well, interestingly, uh, Sligo captain Charlie Harrison has just won the toss and has elected to play towards the Horns End here at uh, Austin Stack Park in Tralee. It will mean that Sligo, as far as we can figure out, will have the aid of the stiff breeze in this first half. As we watch the Kerry captain, Donica Walsh, with uh, Darren O'Sullivan on the bench for Kerry this evening. He will be the on-field captain. But just to put this game into context this evening, Kerry have brought home the Sam Maguire 13 times since their one and only championship meeting with Sligo 34 years ago, while their opponents have added just one further Connacht championship. In essence, Kerry remain one of the favourites to win this year's All-Ireland, despite their recent dip in form Sligo well they're the 500 to 1 outsiders and this is a very very tall order this evening yes yeah, certainly a lot has been said about the, uh, the problems in Kerry over this last week or so we all know that they were lucky uh, to survive against Longford if Longford had to have a free taker that day they certainly would have been in, in trouble uh, in defence they've had to bring back Mike McCarthy now sometimes bringing somebody back after a three year absence doesn't work and it'll be interesting to see does, does he do the job that's needed uh, and up front uh, Tommy Walsh and Gooch if they click certainly uh, it'll push the game in Kerry's favour the one thing for Kerry today is pride is at stake uh, and the last thing is, uh, is there hunger in this Kerry team to go on today and win and be a force before the end of the year? Well, there's our uh, match referee, Sil Doyle, from the Ballyhogue Club in County Wexford. Just his second game of the championship. We'll have the national anthem from Kira O'Donovan now from Killarney.
Well, a beautiful rendition of the national anthem by Kira O'Donovan from Killarney. Well, the Kerry manager, Jack O'Connor, called Kerry supporters to arms earlier this week, asking them to turn out in droves for this match. They haven't let him down, and that is one of the main reasons, ironically, why we're about 20 minutes behind time here this evening. Such a huge crowd have made their way to Austin Stack Park in Tralee. It's the first non-Munster championship match here since 1934. As we bid to find out whether rumours of Kerry's demise have been greatly exaggerated or if Sligo can spring the shock of the summer. They have indeed won the toss, Sligo, and they will play from right to left in this first half, playing in that familiar all-black strip. Kerry, of course, in the green and gold. The winner will take all this evening as the round three qualifier gets off and running at long, long last. Well, Sligo have had quite an eventful day already. Their flight into Farron 4 this morning delayed. Uh, they only got to the ground about an hour before the uh, official throw-in time. But they've been out in the field and making the very most of the hold-up for the last uh, 40, 45 minutes. And they'll be hoping to hold Kerry at bay early doors here. A touch for Aidan O'Mahony, back in the Kerry team this evening. Declan O'Sullivan, unmarked and making the most of it. O'Sullivan with a chance to put Kerry into the lead. Good positive start. Well, he may be wearing some heavy strapping on that left knee, but he moved very sweetly there. Yes, yeah, certainly. This all started around the middle of the field. There was a bit of nervousness. The ball was bouncing about, but Declan started to move. And uh, along with Aidan O'Mahony, he went down the wing, supported him, uh, and done the simple thing and fisted the ball over the, over the bar. So the perfect start for Kerry, Declan O'Sullivan, with just his third point of this summer's championship, as Philip Green from the St. John's Club drives his first kick out, flicked into the space by Jonathan Davy. As expected, uh, Eamon O'Hara may be wearing 14, but is currently out on the middle of the field as Mike McCarthy gets his first touch since the All Ireland final of 2006 in a Kerry jersey and takes the return pass. Doesn't look like a man who's been out of inter county football nearly three years as Cooper tees it up for Tommy Walsh. A swarm of Sligo backs blocking up the channels. Galvin. Good ball to pick out Darrow O'Shea, galloping towards the goal. He struck it really well. And the roar of the home crowd will tell you all you need to know. Kerry double their advantage. Darrow O'Shea in full flight. Yeah, this is very, very patient here with the Kerry team. And certainly the crowd enjoyed this one every bit as much as Dara. Uh, Dara's been a favourite here for, all, uh, for many a year. And certainly that's a good start for him and Kerry. Dar O'Shea with his uh, third point of the championship, edging closer and closer to his 80th championship appearance for Kerry. And here in the beautiful sunshine in Tralee, Sligo find themselves two points behind. This is um, Mark Brehany to Alan Costello, going direct to looking for David Kelly. And back there minding the house is Thomas O'Shea. Kerry's defence closing ranks very quickly. Paul Galvin, all alone and unmarked, has a little bit of work to do to uh, take the pass. Darrow O'Shea encouraging him to let the ball go long. Just seemed to get caught in two minds there and possession back to Sligo. Mike McCarthy tussling with Breheny. This is Michael McNamara, scored a late, late point in the 2007 Connacht final on that great day for Sligo. He's managed to pick out David Kelly. Mark O'Shea, as expected, has moved across to pick him up. McNamara again. Move, man moving into position is Mullen. But the shot from Eugene Mullen was rushed and wild. And that's uh, Sligo's first wide of the game from their first attack. But uh, their full forward line at the moment is made up of uh, Stephen Cohen, David Kelly and uh, Adrian Marin. And Joe, I know you are looking forward to seeing those three men in particular in full flight. Yeah, what the difference is uh, that they're going to have to get good ball in all the time. You know, while a good ball went, went into David Kelly there in the corner, uh, his midfield uh, partner uh, took, uh, took a shot in haste there and there was no support. Ball caught by Eamon O'Hara, but uh, Sil Doyle felt there was a hand in the back. 
Eamon O'Hara and Dara O'Shea will know each other very, very well. Both have been playing uh, senior inter-county football for uh, 15, 16 seasons at this stage. As uh, Sligo's captain, Charlie Harrison, missed the win over Tipperary. Drives that ball in. Man who lost his footing there was Stephen Cohen. Well, he hit the back of the net against Tipperary last weekend. First caught the eye this season with the Sligo under-21s. And as Joe mentioned, if he gets the right kind of supply, he can do uh, serious damage. As you can see there, Mike, when, when the ball hits the hits the surface there, it was raining on and off here all morning, and, and certainly that will have a bearing. Uh, if you hit it low, it, it'll, it'll take off like a rocket, and that's what happened there a couple of times. Kick out from uh, Dear McMurphy, won by O'Mahony. Back in the slight in the uh, Kerry team, rather, to make those kind of hard yards to Scanlon. His second game of the summer, ball hanging up in the breeze. Well read by Colm Cooper, he had a little bit of work to do there. Two men outside, one of them is Sean O'Sullivan. Fine block by McNamara for Sligo. Both uh, sets of players finding it hard to hold their feet, but Sligo hold their heads. This is Noel Maguire, the captain of 2007. And the uh, referee felt there was a foul on the Sligo player there. Free taken by Alan Costello, man who first played inter-county football with Mayo. Manages to pick out uh, a colleague in there, scrapping forward is David Kelly. And again, the Sligo player gets the benefit of the doubt. But you can see any kind of a 50-50 ball on this surface is going to cause problems. Not yeah. least for the referee. Yeah, well, well, the referee's uh, on song so far, but it, it certainly uh, Sligo were hitting the ball in fast and early, and that would cause any team uh, uh, problems. The corner forwards for Sligo are coming out early, and uh, in, in this occasion, they get a free for it. So Mark Breheny just trying to uh, compose himself. Very experienced player and a very accurate one, too. That's a fine kick with the breeze at his back. He opens Sligo's account after a little under seven minutes, and that will settle the nerves. It certainly will, and any free taker likes an easy free, and that certainly wasn't an, e an easy one out on the wing there, uh, and he'd be happy with that. Well, Sligo manager Kevin Walsh uh, said earlier this week that uh, while this may be a glamour fixture, glamour wasn't what Sligo were after. Well, glamour has certainly found them this evening as the Division 4 League champions find themselves uh, being watched by the rest of the nation up against Kerry as we all wait and wonder if they can rediscover that swagger again that was so obvious in the first half last weekend against Longford. That's a poor ball cut out back there by Noel Maguire, as always, playing from the front. This is Davy, and now Alan Costello, the playmaker in the uh, Sligo half-forward line. The extra man back there for Kerry, Darrow O'Shea, just sitting in front of his brother Mark, but the break won by Sligo. Good work by Cohen, and now Costello again. Just one man to aim at inside as Alan Costello ponders his options. Elects to throw it up onto the breeze. There was a run being made in there by uh, Paul McGovern. But the pass was overcooked. And while they're getting on plenty of ball out the field, the marking from the Kerry full back line, watertight so far. Yeah, in fairness that him, Alan Costello looked uh, two or three times to see could he give it to somebody. Yeah, everybody was marked. What would have helped there if somebody had to come round on the, on the outside uh, off his shoulder uh, and give him another option and he had to kick under pressure himself, which resulted in a wide. Well, there's Mike McCarthy back in a Kerry jersey for the first time since that... Uh, all-Ireland final win of three years ago has been playing very good club football with Kilcommon, we're told. And he's had precious little to do so far. As Tommy Griffin moves out from full-back and links up with Seamus Scanlon, the big midfielder from Curro. Now Aidan O'Mahony. Sligo forming a wall across their half-back line, but Donica Walsh finds a little chink, but a poor pass again. Cut out back there by Ross Donovan. Very experienced uh, defender, named in the program at uh, centre back, but playing in the full back line, and he's taken too much out of that ball. Mike, there's, there's a funny thing happening here in the carry full forward. And every time uh, the, the ball has gotten in the middle of the field, now the ball's kicked in direct. But three or four times they didn't kick it in, and Tommy Watch and Gooch were there on their own. 
Here's O'Sullivan. He's gone past the defender easily. Onto his right. And nice and easy from Declan O'Sullivan. His uh, second point of the match. Kerry lead by two again. Yeah, it's good to see Declan uh, Sullivan up in the centre half forward lane. Over this last few games, uh, he's been more defensive minded, and this is where he's at his best when he when he wins the ball and takes somebody on. Good score. So the game uh, beginning to take shape now. Almost ten minutes gone. A solid start from Sligo, but they still find themselves trailing by two. Big cheer as Darrow O'Shea plucked that one from the clouds. Now Paul Galvin missed uh, last weekend's match against Longford due to suspension, but such a key man. Now Cooper being picked up by Ross Donovan. Diagonal ball looking for Walsh. Fine take. Walsh winds up. Good save by the Sligo goalkeeper, Philip Green. Well, Tommy Walsh hit the net against Longford and again only had one thing on his mind there very important save by Green it keeps Kerry at bay neat and tidy from their defence Aidan O'Mahony looking for Galvin just lost his footing again there's uh, no Sligo player at the moment inside the Kerry 45 now they're jogging forward man on the ball is Stephen Cohen nothing on inside he's gone for the spectacular score but even with that strong wind at his back he's chalked up Kerry's fourth or Sligo's uh, fourth wide of the match and uh, here's the chance at the other end for Tommy Walsh yeah this is the first time we've seen Gooch and Tommy Walsh walking or playing off each other a good save for the keeper but you know he, he actually tried, I think he tried the side footed here instead of letting blast uh, and it's not like Tommy he, no, he normally likes to hit a lot harder than that but it was a good save for the goalkeeper well, Tommy Walsh using all of his six foot five, 15 stone frame there to get up over Noel Maguire. As Paul Galvin again in there to win that breaking ball. Just fouled as he was uh, releasing that ball. Sil Doyle calling back the play as Mike McCarthy drifts across to the wing. Aidan O'Mahony moving into position. This is Colin Cooper. Again, he's out in front of Ross O'Donovan. McCarthy has stayed forward reacquainting himself with uh, the pace of senior inter-county football as Sligo organised themselves man funnelling back there was Charlie Harrison and that latest Kerry attack has petered out now Sligo have 12 men inside their own half as Eugene Mullen hits a good old fashioned up and under into uh, one of the smallest full forward lines in the country batted away by Tom O'Sullivan and tidied up by Darrow O'Shea. Here's Galvin, who's moved across to the far side, full of running and chomping at the bit today to Seamus Scanlon. Just one man to aim at, and Noel Maguire was alive to the through ball. This is Paul McGovern, plays his club football with the Eastern Harps to Alan Costello. Again, the quick look up to see where Marin is. He's picked him out too. Adrian Marin takes aim. That's a fine score from Adrian Marin. Sligo's top scorer in the championship leaves us with a one-point game after 13 minutes. Yeah, here we see the score here again. A great pass to the outside, which caught Mark O'Shea and certainly just turned, had, had no hesitation and stuck it over the bar. Well, Adrian Marin did really well to win possession out in front of none other than uh, Mark O'Shea that time, being picked up by Tommy Griffin at the moment. So it's Sligo playing with the aid of the strong breeze who have drawn to within one point of their hosts. This is Sean O'Sullivan holding up the point of attack. Walsh trying to time his run. Kerry though right back where they started. Cooper roaring for it. The pass is delivered just in time. Good defending there by Eamon O'Hara, who's dropped back to give Sligo a seventh defender. And between O'Hara and Johnny Davy, they get the job done. Sligo keeping things tight early on. Adrian Marin, again, just two Sligo players inside the Kerry half. One of them is Stephen Cohn, but he was tugging at the jersey of uh, Tom O'Sullivan. 
And now Kerry must try and break down this Sligo defence again. Aidan O'Mahony looking up. There's that diagonal ball, but poorly struck. And Sligo have been obviously studying Kerry's preferred method of attack and soaking up the pressure at the moment. The, here's Alan Costello from the Culera Strand Hill Club. Pass was poor. And now Donica Walsh. Dispossessed ball knocked away by uh, Mark Brehany. But uh, he did so illegally. And after about a quarter of an hour, Joe, I think both teams setting out their stall content to soak up whatever pressure is thrown at them and try and play on the break. Yeah, well, cer certainly Slago are getting men behind the ball, which is making it very, very difficult uh, for the slick moving uh, carry forwards. But on the other hand, there's a lot of space in the carry defence. And if one of these uh, uh, sharp low balls in into the full forward lane uh, uh, connects with a, with a man running onto it, it could be danger for Kerry. Donica Walsh running into heavy traffic here in Tralee. Back to Cooper. Denied by the post. Colm Cooper still looking for his first score of the evening. Denied by the width of the upright. Well, a feature of uh, Sligo's matches this season has been how hard they are to break down. They've, uh, they lost just one game en route to the Division 4 league title. That to Antrim. And their narrow defeat to Galway a couple of weeks ago. Certainly making people sit up and take notice. Here's David Kelly, one of their speed merchants, holding off Mark O'Shea. Man taking the pass is Adrian Marin. Well, he had the confidence in his own ability, but kicking across the wind. That's six wides for Sligo. And they're certainly creating the chances. And this man, David Kelly, causing Kerry a lot of problems, Joe. He is. Uh, the good ball's going in. He's out in front. And Mark O'Shea is one of the best man-to-man -man markers in the country. And certainly, he's, he's getting his hands full with him here. And he had support that time from Adrian Aaron, which was, was unlucky uh, with his finish. Darrow O'Shea. Time on his hands just for a moment. Mark Brehany trying to make a nuisance of himself. Well, you could see what Darrow O'Shea was thinking, but... The pass miscued and easy for uh, Sligo and Ross Donovan, who's picked out a teammate. This is Alan Costello again, getting on an awful lot of ball as he drops deep. Adrian Marin again making himself available down along the left hand side. Another high ball looking for David Kelly. And credit to the five foot eight inch corner forward. He got up there to hamper Mark O'Shea's progress and Sligo have won a 45. Kevin Walsh will be fairly pleased Joe after 17 minutes. I think all the Sligo supporters will be very pleased at this minute in time. It, they soaked up an awful lot of pressure from Kerry there. Kerry aren't moving that well up front and that'll be cause, uh, cause concern to Jack O'Connor. I see the, him and the, him and the selectors talking down here in the lane uh, trying to sort something out but no uh, uh, Sligo uh, are growing in confidence as the half goes on. So all eyes at Austin Stack Park fall onto the slender shoulders of David Kelly. Struck a very good 45 against Galway. And this one had plenty of legs, but Sligo's seventh wide of the match. And that will be a cause of some concern for the Sligo management team. Kevin Walsh assisted this season by Paul Durkin, Desi Sloyan and Paul Taylor. And plenty of food for thought for Jack O'Connor and his selectors, Ger O'Keefe and Eamon Fitzmaurice. Their second half display against Longford last weekend, well, it's been the talk of the county here in Kerry all week. And it's been a sluggish start again this evening. Here's Charlie Harrison, very tenacious player, as is this man, Eugene Mullen. Once more, they're looking for David Kelly. He is the go-to man in that full forward line. And Mark O'Shea struggling to keep up. Kelly, he struck that well. Oh, that's a wonderful score from David Kelly. The in-form corner forward levels the match here for the first time with almost 19 minutes gone. Yeah, this is great work we did. Once again, out in front, won a difficult ball to come off, uh, come off the slippy surface. But as soon as he rounded uh, Mark O'Shea, he had no hesitation from 30, 35 yards and chipped it over the bar. Well done. So, Sligo back on terms. And remember, they have the aid of the stiff breeze 
in this first half. Dermot Murphy's kick out held up in that wind. Break won though by Tomas O'Shea. Now Mark O'Shea, who's been preoccupied with defensive duty so far, now heading off for a little stroll to Paul Galvin. Donica Walsh breaking to his right, but Galvin driving towards that crossbar. He's gone for the lead score, and he has got it. Fine kick and finish from Paul Galvin. Back in the game as the Sligo goalkeeper Philip Green is down and in some distress. Obviously injured himself in an effort to prevent uh, Paul Galvin's shot sneaking over the bar. Here we can see Johnny Davy trying to chase Galvin, but to no avail. Yeah, that was good. that was great work from Kerry from back to front. You know, Paul Galvin stood up, went at them, and had no hesitation when, once he got inside to put it over the bar. A good score, and certainly that's just what Kerry needed. Well, Philip Green uh, colliding awkwardly with the goalpost there as he moved across to try and cover that kick. But with 20 minutes gone and Kerry back in front by a point, we're going to hear for the first time from the studio and Peter Canavan. Yeah, we've got a real contest in our hands. I think it was imperative that Sligo didn't let Kerry away to a good lead at the start, and, and they've done that. Um, I think they can, fight, they, they can thank their goalkeeper, Philip Green, for making a great save of, of Tommy Watts. But they've contained Kerry at the start, and I'm sure Kevin Walsh is pleased with that. But he, he's not going to be so pleased with, with the use of uh, possession up front. Um, it's, it's OK getting men behind the ball, which they're doing, and they're working very hard defensively. But they're going to have to give more uh, coming forward. That They are playing with a strong breeze here in the first half. And if they're going to be in with a chance of winning this game, they want to be going in at half time, Mike, I'm sure, with at least a three or four point lead. Well, certainly it is a very strong wind at Sligo's backs in this uh, first half. Here we can see again how Philip Green picked up that injury. He had eyes only for the ball. And uh, certainly this will be a worry for Sligo. Green in his sixth season with the Sligo senior football squad. Interestingly, plays at full back for his club, so he'll be no stranger to be being in the wars on a regular basis. And just looking at the uh, flags around the ground here, Joe, you'd have to think that the breeze, if anything, is beginning to pick up. And that will be foremost in Sligo's minds now, with only a quarter of an hour to go in this uh, first half. Yeah, but we're seeing that, you know, Kerry in the second half when they have the breeze with them, they're going to have to use the ball an awful lot better than they're using at the minute. If I was Tommy Watch, I'd be a very frustrated man in there. He's making runs, and the ball that's going into him in the full forward is very, very poor. Interestingly as well, Eamon O'Hara at this moment has moved right back in again towards his uh, programme position of full forward. Trying to give his teammates out the field something to aim at. I think also there, Mike, maybe he, he, he's heading back into the full forward lane for a little bit of a breather, but he, he wouldn't last the pace out in the middle of the field. At the other end, Sean O'Sullivan in side close to the goal but he hasn't managed to uh, sneak that one inside the post all eyes on the umpire there for a moment looked earlier on in that move like Colm Cooper may have thrown the ball to uh, Paul Galvin but uh, referee Sil Doyle allowed play to continue but Paul Galvin causing problems down on the right hand side yeah, we see Sean O'Sullivan cut, uh, cutting in here. Uh, that's a poor miss uh, on his behalf from 10 or 12 yards. Uh, that should be put over the bar. But in, in fairness, you had two Sligo defenders there, Tacton and Harry, and them, so uh, uh, they put him under pressure. Again, no clean possession. Alan Costello down around his bootlaces to gather that ball, manages to dig it out. Takes the return pass from Tony Taylor. Route one, O'Hara is in there. Bounce deceiving everybody in the end. And easy for Kerry's defence to mop that up and start all over again. Yeah, you can see the way Sligo changed the tactics there. The new Eamon O'Hara was in round uh, the full forward lane and they hit the ball direct in, high down the middle. Well, David Kelly, for a moment there, thought he was in around the back door, but the referee, Sil Doyle, had blown his whistle. There was a little push in the back on, as that move uh, began to originate. Eamon O'Hara... I think was the player penalised and Kerry have possession again it's been a slow burning first half so far but Kerry have done just enough to lead by the minimum 
playing into the teeth of the breeze. Scanlon, again a little look up. The pass for Tommy Walsh is no more than 50-50. And Noel Maguire makes it look very easy. This is Mark Brehany, now filling the role of playmaker. O'Hara out there in front of Aidan O'Mahony. Two very tough customers and O'Mahony's persistence there enough to put a halt to the gallop of O'Hara. Here's Griffin stretching his legs, the Kerry fullback from Dingle. Need support. It wasn't coming, but in any event, he'd done enough to win the free. Mike, I think Kerry have a problem in the full forward. And every time somebody gets the ball, I, I don't know what they've been doing in training, but every time they look to kick the ball into Tommy Walsh, it, it's either too high or, or, or to the wrong side of it, and, and he's getting more frustrated as, as the game goes on. Well, while Kerry may be having some problems with their long ball game, Paul Galvin's short game is certainly reaping dividends. He's won another free. Darrow Shea to take. Again, though, it's poorly struck. Donica Walsh does well. Held up by McNamara. Cooper manages to slip the tackle of Donovan. Cooper looking to extend the Kerry lead, but that ball tailing away wickedly on the wind and he has looked a little out of sorts again this evening so far yeah certainly you know he, he, he's rounded the man you think he's just a normal tap over uh, tap the ball over the bar but uh, he hit it too high and wide and, and uh, more frustration for the carry forwards Sil Doyle just getting a little too close to the action there for a moment Eamon O'Hara does well just pick the pocket of O'Mahony O'Hara with one of those typically barnstorming runs. He's wrong-footed another back. Good block. Might break for Kelly. Digs it out for Cohen. The angle is tight, but he snuck it inside that post and over the bar. The sides are level for the second time, thanks to the trusty left boot of Stephen Cohen, but that score made by Eamon O'Hara. Yeah, you see all the quickness and the experience of of all the years, but I think he made a mistake here. He should have passed the ball instead of shooting there, and there might have been a better chance of a goal. Uh, but they recovered well, and Cohen took his, uh, took his point well. Well, the quick hands of uh, David Kelly keeping that move alive as Cohen brings his tally in the championship to one goal and three points. Kevin Walsh seems uh, a little upset about something, but by and large, the Sligo supporters who've made the very long journey here to Tralee will be quite pleased with the state of affairs after 27 minutes. All square in this round three qualifier. Tomas O'Shea drives past Marin, Costello putting in the challenge. Now Tommy Walsh, back to O'Sullivan. It was a real chance. And it was also the first time that Kerry have managed to open up that uh, Sligo back line. And Sean O'Sullivan should really have hit the target. He certainly should. Great work by Thomas O'Shea. And it's the first time that uh, Tommy Walsh got a decent ball in, which he won, laid off well. But it was a poor finish in the finish up, and to be disappointed with that. Well, no doubt about it, if Tommy Walsh gets the right kind of supply, he has the hands and the feet to cause Sligo problems. Good take by Paul Galvin. Hits the ground running. Walsh beside him. Good control. Donica Walsh. One of those trademark points. He's always good for a couple. Just stayed on the shoulder of Galvin. Had a lot of work to do when he got that ball. He certainly had, but he, he took a score well. But if there's one man needed to lift the carry team, it's Paul Galvin. He's the one that's winning the ball, winning the dirty ball, going at the, going at the opposition. And there, he showed a great bit of skill to chip it up into Donnego Walsh's hands, and he put it over the bar. That is uh, four points now for Donnego Walsh in the championship. And Kerry lead by the minimum once more. Again, Walsh in there in the thick of it. Sean O'Sullivan, who's drifted out from the corner. Lofting it in. Walsh and Cooper jump for the one ball. Got their uh, calls mixed up there. And plenty of Sligo men staying on the ground to pick up the pieces. O'Hara, who stayed in the... Uh, Kerry half, little tug on his jersey, referee plays on, O'Hara again, round the corner for Cohen, manages to slip the challenge of Tom O'Sullivan, this is David Kelly, 
Sligo's tricky forwards finding some room. Cohen has gone for the score, and he has got it. Another beautiful score from Stephen Cohen, level for the third time. Yeah, you can see these two young men, Cohen and Kelly, are causing havoc. Every time the ball goes in, they're very, very patient, support each other well, and are confident in the finish. Well, Kevin Walsh, in his first season as Sligo manager, has made an awful lot of progress. And his team matching Kerry right now, stride for stride. Alan Costello in there to win the breaking ball. Man who learned his trade with the Ball Club in County Mayo. Now very much an integral part of this Sligo team. That's a poor pass though. Possession given right back to Kerry again. Declan O'Sullivan, who's faded to the periphery of the match for the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Linking up with Tomas O'Shea, the angle is tight. Recycled for Tommy Walsh. Little look at the posts. Saw exactly all he needed to. And he makes it look very, very easy. Well, in the absence of Kieran Donaghy, he looks the most reliable finisher just now. Yeah, patience here uh, uh, by the Kerry team. Tommy came out on the outside, which is the simple thing to do, instead of uh, heading away towards the goals. And when he got his chance, he, he chipped it over the bar. You know, that's Kerry at the best, supporting and taking the right options. There is uh, Kieran Donaghy. A broken uh, bone in his foot. Looks uh, set to rule him out of the rest of this championship season. What a first half he turned in against Longford last weekend. And the Kerry supporters know exactly now what they're missing. But uh, Kerry have managed to engineer themselves into a one-point lead again. That will do for now. Tomas O'Shea to Donica Walsh, making an awful lot of hard yards to Sullivan. Sean Sullivan, unmarked. Mark Brehenny sprinting back to try and put in the challenge. Sean Sullivan gets his kick in. Just faded away at the last moment. That breeze blowing right into his face. It's Kerry's fourth wide of the match. And on the basis of what we've seen so far, Joe, anything Kerry get this evening, they will have to earn it. Yeah, certainly, because as we said before the game, this Lego team don't know when they're beaten. And the longer the game goes on, the more confident they're going to get and the more difficult they're going to make, make it for Kerry. Yes. Sean O'Sullivan has, has a two or three chances down there and he's been unfortunate. But he, he, he took the right option. He seen the opening, he went for it uh, and just kicked the ball narrowly wide. So a little under three minutes of normal time remaining in this first half. Declan O'Sullivan kick out was poorly struck O'Sullivan's handling just letting him down though Johnny Davey in there now Cooper ball just drawn to him like a magnet quick change of direction onto that right foot close but not quite close enough that's Kerry's fifth wide Cooper continuing to work back and over across that 20 meter line but uh, just can't buy a score this evening. Nobody can lack their commitment or, or their work rate, but it must be getting more and more frustrating for the carry forwards when uh, when easy chances like that seem uh, seem to go wide. But uh, no one good, the next ball he comes, he's able to put it in the back of the net. Well, this Sligo substitute that's getting ready to come in is Neil Ewing from Drumcliff Ross's point. Was named to start in the programme, but made way once Charlie Harrison recovered from injury. But Neil Ewing is now about to come in. Player who's being replaced is Michael McNamara. Kevin Walsh and his uh, backroom team obviously feeling that uh, a tactical change is required in the half-back line. And certainly Ewing will buzz around this pitch all evening. Game moving again. David Kelly once more content to run at Mark O'Shea. Ewing moving in to take the pass and very obvious push in the back. Free into Sligo. 
Well, when they get in close to goal, they just love to take on a defender, and it's causing real problems. It certainly is, and, uh, and that's some introduction being brought into the game. I've been given a pass like that, uh, but it gets them a free, uh, which should be scorable. Adrian Marin looks fairly straightforward, and that it is. Level for the fourth time here at Austin Stack Park in Tralee. We'll have at least two minutes of additional time at the end of this uh, first half. But for Sligo, Joe, so far so good. So far so good, and certainly the longer this game goes on, the more Sligo are, are, are getting confident. You know, who would have said before the game it would be coming up to halftime 6 all, uh, And it's a deserved score too. So everything Kerry do, Sligo match it. You wonder as well on the flip side what Jack O'Connor is going to be saying to his team at the break. Well, it's about pride here now. I'd say we're going to test them. Practice will probably go out the win and talk about pride in, in the Kerry jersey, and, and we haven't seen enough of it from all the players. Tomas O'Shea, one man who in the past has dug Kerry out of many tight corners. Former Footballer of the Year. He's picked out Cooper. Back to Galvin. Loose for a moment. Just enough time for him to pull that trigger and ease Kerry back in front again. O'Shea, Cooper and Galvin three of Kerry's tried and trusted warriors linking up and Galvin has looked really sharp yeah we talked about leaders and we talked about men shown for the ball we're after seeing two or three of them there Thomas O'Shea working hard giving a good ball in it wasn't easy for uh, uh, for uh, Gooch to win it but he turned and gave it the right man and, and certainly Paul Galvin has his shooting boots on today well that's two points now for Paul Galvin his first two of the championship have arrived this evening as we tick deep into the first minute of stoppage time. Mark Brehany. Once more, Kelly is the target. His corner being peppered with ball, and Mark O'Shea just struggling to lay a hand on him. Kelly holding him off. Very tight angle. And despite the best efforts of Stephen Cohen, that will go down as another Sligo wide. Their eighth of the evening. as Kevin Walsh tries to, I'm sure, compose himself and compose his thoughts for the half-time team talk. Yeah, Mark O'Shea done a great job there. He didn't dive in. He, he kept David Kelly in the outside and forced him into kicking the kick with his left foot eh, as he went into the corner. Good take by Seamus Scanlon, winning primary possession and setting Paul Galvin away. Once more, though, Jonathan Davy and... Mark Brehany doubling up on Galvin, who uh, picked up a little bit of a knock there. Sligo get the free though. Brehany coming off his shoulder is Jonathan Davy, another man who could run all day and all night. Davy, diagonal ball, trying to mix it up for O'Hara. Here's Kelly. Good save by Murphy. Kelly again, and did it cross the line? The umpire says it did. Sligo have struck for the first goal of the match and now we've got a game on our hands yeah certainly well, what a time to get a goal uh, we talked about the Sligo halfbacks going up the field and, and attacking certainly to hit it seen Eamon O'Hara in the, in the full forward lane and all the years of experience he done the simple thing he broke the ball down and there was David Kelly not once but twice uh, and the second time he got the chance here a very acute angle and did magnificently well to, uh, to get it across the lane well, Dermot Murphy beaten for just the third time in the championship and credit to David Kelly if at first you don't succeed try again the first goal of the match has blown this game wide open and Sligo sprint into the dressing rooms with a pep in their step could the shock of the summer be on the cards half time here at Austin Stack Park Winterly Sligo 1-6 Kerry, seven points. Don't go anywhere. Join us after the break for halftime analysis.
We could be heading for an absolute sensation here in Tralee. Sligo are leading by two points against Kerry in the third round of the qualifiers after a late goal by David Kelly gave them the half-time lead. Let's just look at some of the stats briefly. The Division Board champions, less of the possession, even though they're enjoying a very stiff wind or enjoyed it in the first half. They had eight wides, which they might come to regret, but they did get a goal just before half-time, which has changed this game. And Peter Canavan, did they deserve it? Yeah, certainly did. Um, in fact, they probably should be more up. They'll be disappointed. They're playing with strong breeds that they're not uh, that they're not more up. I think they've checked eight wides in the first half, so that tells his own story. But the goal goal chance came. Uh, Eamon O'Hara was moved into the full forward line after about 15 or 20 minutes. Obviously, Walsh felt the, the, the need for a, a good target man up, and his uh, move in there has, has paid uh, dividends. The other thing about the goal, David Kelly has been on fire. He's continued his rich being a form. And I tell you what, that's, that's some finish. Um, talk about persistence. And from a almost an impossible angle, he, he's managed to get it across the lane. So well deserved. Now, by contrast, David Kerry have missed goal chances, which they may rue. If you can take us through those, you know, a typical Kerry, the ball come in, the guys know that the ball is coming in, and the guy that catches it knows the man is on his shoulder. Typical ball in. Once Tommy Walsh wins it, he knows there's a man coming off his shoulder, and there straight away, bang! Great, great save by Philip Harrison. To be honest with you, um, you know. There's the, the game turns on goals. I know maybe the, maybe the game did turn at half time for Sligo, but you need to be getting these. And, and a team of Curry's quality needs to be finishing off at least one out of two of these. Uh, I felt the two goal chances the players that shot probably should have given the ball off. In this case, um, Cholo, Sean O'Sullivan and Donica walks over to his left. What had an open goal if he had released it? Um, you know, the likes of Donaghy with great peripheral vi uh, vision probably would have seen that. And likewise, Tommy Walsh with the first goal chance. He had, he had somebody to his left hand side for an easier chance. Okay, now Kerry started very well, got the first few points. But once Sligo settled, how well do you think they did in getting these points? Well, I think when they, when they played clever ball into the inside forward line, uh, Mike referred to uh, the smallest full forward line in the country. So there was four or five aimless balls just thumped in on top, and that balls that they were never going to win. But whenever they, they put in measured pa passes out in front of the, uh, the defenders, the Sligo full forward line definitely ha have the beaten of, of the Kerry defence. Just on that, um, I think Jack O'Connor has been slow to make changes in, in his defence. Eamon O'Hara moved into the edge of the square, and O'Mahony followed him. Rather than putting Mike McCarthy back or putting Tommy Griffin back, somebody with a more physical presence, and as a result of that, the Kerry back line is unbalanced. You have Tommy Griffin playing wing back, you have Mike McCarthy playing wing back, and Tomas O'Shea playing centre back. So positions that they're not familiar with, and, and that is paid into Sligo's hands. Well, we have a potentially sensational result here. A two point lead to Sligo. We'll be back for more chat after this. Division 4 champions Sligo have come to Tralee and lead by two points against Kerry at half past time. Kerry going for six All Ireland finals in a row. Peter, what is wrong with Kerry? Yeah, well, they're in disarray, there's no doubt about it. And even up front, the likes of the Gooch, uh, Sean O'Sullivan, they very, seem very nervous on it and uh, on char characteristic, characteristically off them. But I think they've got to rearrange defensively, first of all. And if he does that, uh, and get a greater supply of ball and I still think they're good enough I said earlier Sligo would need to be winning by about three or four points with that breeze if they think they're going to win the game but uh, the other thing too is the lack of pressure that Kerry are putting on I think Kerry think this is only Sligo we're playing here we can step it up whenever. that's not the case they've got to be putting in more more big hits there's no, there hasn't been any big physical hits going on uh, going in there in the first half so they need to step up their physical presence David what do you reckon the chances are that Sligo can keep this going? Um, there's every chance because they did in the first half they have to, have to, have to get the ball into the full forward line. If they don't, they're going to be struggling. The ball is going to be overturned. They're not strong enough in their half-back line to carry the ball forward. I don't think they're quick enough, but not strong enough. They need to win the first 10 minutes. And you know what? We have a serious game on our hands then. OK, let's see a little bit more of the first half. But Peter, there were scores from Kerry every time Sligo drew level. Yeah, I think that'll be disappointing from, from Sligo's point of view. that a, a number of chances to go ahead. But uh, Paul Galvin has been a man here for, for Kerry in the first half. Very subtle touch. He set up for, for Donica Walsh here. But if you take Galvin's, you know, input out of this uh, first half, Kerry would, would be going in here easily three or four points down. You so, know, your prediction for the second half, David? Um, I still predict it's going to be a tight game. Don't be surprised if we have extra time and more excitement. I still think Curry are going to have enough ball and they're going to get more ball into full forward line than Sligo did in the first half. I think they're just going to about pip it. And Sligo, how important is that they just keep Kerry, stop them scoring early on in the second half, Peter? Well, very similar to the first half. Uh, if they can contain Kerry for the first 10 or 15 minutes, it will be a big help. But if you're going to concede a goal, uh, probably before half time, you know, it's a good time to do it. They can regroup, then they know what to expect from this uh, Sligo team in the second half. 
but I still think they, they have too much class up front. They did create goal chances in the first half. I expect them to do the same in the second. The winning of this game is going to be on the substitutes and who Jack O'Connor brings in and who Kevin Walsh brings in. The managers are going to have a lot to do with the winning of this game. Yeah, we'll just see um, Parik Reedy on there for Kerry. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him picking up uh, David Kelly. Mark O'Shea, one of the finest uh, cornerbacks in the country, had his hands full. So Reedy could well be in there just to try and contain David Kelly. O'Shea had an off day and he should have been moved sooner than this. Ty Canelli is another big card for Curry, And on the, the Sean Davy card for Sligo is going to be just as important. Well, indeed, he is on for Mark O'Shea, we've just been told. So let's go back over now to our commentary team of Joe Kernan and first Mike Finnerty. Well, Kerry uh, back out on the field very quickly, as you would expect. There is Pordick really from Scar to Glen in to replace uh, Mark O'Shea and that Kerry full back line. No other changes just yet, but uh, Joe, you were speculating at half time about what Jack O'Connor might have said and what he might uh, do in terms of switches and changes. And you expect to see uh, a few more changes very, very soon and early in the second half. Yeah, well, uh, I, I think he'll give this, uh, uh, the same format up front, uh, go for maybe uh, five or ten minutes. But if it's not working, that's the one area that they need to be more slicker and get the ball in early. Uh, in, in comparison to Slago, Slago are getting good ball into the small men and they're winning it. Uh, Kerry have a Colossus in there and Tommy Watson, they haven't used them enough. Well, word coming through at half time that a lot of Sligo supporters that were making the journey down to Tralee for this game have had to pull in along the road to watch the match on TV3 because of uh, heavy traffic. We can only presume they're enjoying it so far. They lead Kerry here by two points at the halfway mark in this round three All-Ireland qualifier. There's Sean Davey into the Sligo team to replace Eugene Mullen at half time. And if you're looking for a good omen and you're from Sligo, the last time Sligo came to Tralee back in 1997, they beat Kerry in a league match, and Sean Davey is one of two survivors, along with Eamon O'Hara, that plays again tonight. But that was a long, long time ago. A lot has changed in the interim, and there's a long way to go in this game. Kerry will play from right to left in this second half, defending the town end, and with a good, stiff breeze at their back. Declan O'Sullivan fouled by the aforementioned Sean Davey and Davey has wasted little time in getting stuck right into this game yeah certainly that was a cynical tackle if uh, Declan O'Sullivan had the breakthrough he would have had an easy score and Sean Davey certainly wasn't letting him pass and Declan O'Sullivan who uh, was forced off during the second half against Longford last weekend back on his feet again as all eyes fall on to Cullum Cooper yet to score this evening holds his nerve and draws Kerry to within one point it's just his 13th point of the championship he scored just five of them from open play it hasn't been a vintage summer by any stretch of the imagination for Cooper but that opens his account this evening yeah certainly he'll be glad to get on the scoreboard it's amazing to think that in the first uh, 35 minutes that he hadn't got a score and he was on the ball often enough and if you want an easy free that's a good one to get him started philip green's kick out hanging on the wind galvin he has been kerry's best player in this match so far again wins possession to aiden o'mahony the words I'm sure of Jack O'Connor ringing in Kerry's ears. Declan O'Sullivan, that looks good. We are level for the fifth time this evening. Two points for Kerry in less than two minutes, and they're back on terms. Yeah, and Kerry are, are showing what they intend to do straight away here. We have a couple of quick scores, a quick free, men pushing forward and, giving, and, and taking the right options. That's three points, all from play from Declan O'Sullivan. Club mate of Jack O'Connor at Drummond Pierce's, of course. And the Kerry supporters, for the first time this evening, beginning to find their voice. Beautiful sunshine now, spraying all over Austin Stack Park in Tralee. For one evening only, of course, it's home to championship football again. And we have got a really good game on our hands now. Breheny, added to by Marin. Cohn using his body wisely there to hold off Tom O'Sullivan. Needs support. It comes from Marin. Lofting it in towards Alan Costello, but well taken by Tomas O'Shea. Very much the lord of the manor back there in front of the Kerry goal. Galvin, willing and able to bail him out of that tight corner. 
Kerry being very casual, and now Mike McCarthy needs to make up his mind. Jonathan Davy just clipping at his heels, and Sligo eventually win the ball back. Good, disciplined, patient work from Sligo. Marin again, fouled by Donica Walsh, and Sligo get the game moving quickly. They need a score now again just to settle them into this second half. Breheny spots Eamon O'Hara. Neil Ewing outside if he needs him. O'Hara backs himself, and that's a good decision. Sligo back in front, thanks to the right boot of Eamon O'Hara in his 16th championship season. Yes, yeah, certainly Sligo have been patient here, uh, using the ball well and supporting each other well. And, and how many times over the years have we seen Eamon O'Hara doing this, getting the ball out on, on the outside and chipping it over the bar? So Sligo back in front again. O'Hara has moved out towards the centre of the field. He's got uh, his second wind. Aidan O'Mahony, though, has not left his side since this game started. Referee Sil Doyle has spotted a little bit of jersey tugging by Paul Galvin there. A man who's had more than his fair share of conversations with referees already this summer. I think back in fairness that time, Mike, he was a wee bit frustrated that uh, Aidan O'Mahony didn't, uh, didn't get a free. Tony Taylor towards Kelly, buzzing, and the Sligo supporters buzzing with anticipation as well. Every time he gets on that ball, he's drawn a free off Porrick Reedy, and they're finding it very, very hard to pin him down. Yeah, the referee's 100% great. You can see the jersey being pulled. But it's amazing that the smallest man in the field can win a high ball like that, that he isn't being put under more pressure. And, you know, that's, that certainly would be disappointing from a Kerry point of view. Adrian Marin makes no mistake from point-blank range, and Sligo have restored that two-point cushion. That's Marin's third point of the game. The man from Curry. And... You presume that Kevin Walsh had accounted for pretty much every eventuality. What about with a half an hour to go, his team leading by two points? And the mighty Kerry in a dogfight here in Tralee. Kamal Soche in there in the thick of things again. Plenty of movement inside. Tommy Walsh goes one way, Cooper the other. Donovan... Jumping with Cooper, he does well. O'Sullivan takes his point. I'm sure a goal flashed through his mind there, but the shot was always rising. That's four points from play for the centre forward. Yeah, uh, you the viewers at home probably did, uh, didn't see the, uh, the movement which led after that, but I, I, I reckon that was one that was done on the training ground. They drew the full back lane out and then tried to hit it over the top. And when Gooch won a, a real hard ball, he had good support from Declan O'Sullivan, and that could have went into the net, but lucky for Sligo and over the bar. Well, the two-time All-Star Declan O'Sullivan is certainly pulling his weight again for Kerry this evening. There you can see that uh, kick-out statistic. Kerry lording it in terms of kick-outs, but Sligo making the very most of anything they're winning around the middle. Here they are again, chasing down everything. Costello manages to find Ewing, Neil Ewing, with the speculative shot. Well, he wouldn't be renowned as a scorer with Drumcliff Ross's point. But you just wonder, as the longer the game goes on and the more Sligo stay in the hunt, Joe, yeah, those are the chances the Sligo need to be taking. They mightn't be getting that many of them throughout this second half. And, you know, that was one that probably should have went over the bar. Eamon uh, Fitzmaurice, the Kerry selector, showing a good turn of pace there to get out of the way as that kick-out dropped in his direction. Sean O'Sullivan to Tommy Walsh, who breaks off the shoulder of the full-back Maguire. Sets it up for Galvin. Just got his kick in before the tackle arrived. Super score from Paul Galvin. Three points in the match for the wing forward from Fanoog. And we are level now for the sixth time.
Well, I'm sure Kieran Donaghy would love to be out there in the middle of this, the championship, just coming to the boil on evenings like this. This is knockout championship football. Remember, if the sides do finish level at the end of 70 minutes, we will have extra time. And after being level on six occasions already, you wouldn't bet against it. Cooper waiting patiently for Sean O'Sullivan. Tantalizingly close. Managed to hang on to it, and he's one of three. But Cullum Cooper had absolutely no interest there in taking on his man. He wanted to feed the runner, and it works out in the end. Yeah, the one thing Kerry have done here, and it's noticeable in, 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 from the start of the second half, every time they get a free kick, they move the ball quicker. There's space inside, and now they have the, and now they have the man coming off the shoulder. And this is their second free that they got from uh, a, a blatant foul by Sligo. Well, Sligo a little bit uh, reluctant to allow Cooper to take the free. Tap over score, that's his second point of the match, both from freeze. But you would have presumed, Joe, at this stage of the summer, if Kerry were to be winning big championship matches, they would need much more from Cullum Cooper in terms of scores from play. Yeah, but this is no, no, no ordinary season for, uh, for Kerry. Uh, they're struggling with their confidence, uh, uh, they've had injuries. Uh, the, uh, all they need to do is just win this match. That's all that matters today. That it be one point or five points, uh, it's all about winning. And there, as if you needed reminding of his class, whatever about his form, five-time All-Star Cullum Cooper. All he needs is one ball. Poor kick out from Philip Green. Donica Walsh to Cooper. He knows every nook and cranny of this field. He was winding up for the shot there. Now Darrow O'Shea. A Gary Owen to test out Maguire had it but uh, lost it again and Sean O'Sullivan has managed to win a free it certainly wasn't pretty but it turned out to be fairly effective yeah who says the old up and under doesn't work certainly uh, w w w when Derek kicked that ball he wouldn't have been too proud of it but it's amazing what what can happen when you get the ball into the danger area like that it puts the defenders under pressure and it was actually a good steal by Sean O'Sullivan so a yellow card for Noel Maguire, the Sligo fullback from Eski. Very experienced, he really should have known better. And Sean O'Sullivan from Craman makes no mistake, eases Kerry into a two-point lead. And all of a sudden, I think the natives here in Kerry a lot more relaxed and looking forward to the rest of this match. Well, I, I don't think it's time to get relaxed yet, Mike, because, you know, there's still a lot to play, and, and this Lego team will not quit. Well, there's Darren O'Sullivan, the Kerry captain this season, warming up and getting ready to come in. A lot of football still to be played as Darrow O'Shea draws the biggest cheer of the evening. And Aidan O'Mahony, another crowd favourite, manages to win a free... And if Kerry are to dig themselves out of this game this evening, they're going to need the likes of O'Shea and O'Mahony. You know, there's nothing better in the game to see somebody going up and catching a ball. And, uh, and Darrow, he might lose the legs, but he, he won't lose the hands. Certainly, he's still one of the best catchers in the game. And he was frustrated there that he couldn't take the, uh, the quick free kick, but they want to keep moving the ball fast. Well, two of Sligo's full back line have now been booked as Tommy Walsh gets the flick. And Philip Green had to be on his toes there and alert as Walsh rose highest to meet that delivery. Now Jonathan Davy taken down by Sean O'Sullivan. Well, Jonathan Davy is only five foot seven inches tall in his stockings, and Sean O'Sullivan did not uh, move in properly there to stop him. And Sil Doyle, as you'd expect, has the notebook out very quickly. Well, the free has been uh, kicked away by Sligo. They had possession. They tried to complicate things, and Cooper in like a flash to intercept the pass. 
Well, Sligo being much too casual in their own half. Yeah. Uh, mistakes cost you in matches, and that was a poor mistake or a poor, a poor free kick there. But the one thing that's noticeable, I think this is Kerry's third or fourth free kick. Sligo's tactic has become poor and erratic in the in the wrong areas, and there's two or three scores. Oh, I, I talked, I talked good Jared that one. Sorry. Well, that is what's known perhaps as the curse of the co-commentator. It did look like meat and drink for Cooper, and here in Tralee of all places. You'd have expected him to put that away. Yeah, that was he'd be disappointed with himself in that. That you know, that was a simple free. You know, if somebody at under 12 or under 14 done that, you'd be asking questions. And certainly maybe he'd make up for it before the game's over. Well, Kerry have outscored uh, Sligo in this second half by six points to two. And with 20 minutes to go, it's advantage Kerry, but only just. Here's Charlie Harrison now for Sligo. Their inspirational captain from St. John's looking for Cohn. And again, Sil Doyle felt there was a hand on the back of the defender there. It's noticeable here. Kerry winning an awful lot of the ball around the middle of the field, but Mike McCarthy uh, is playing a sweeper uh, for most of the second half, just playing in front of the full back lane. So uh, Sligo wisely didn't play the ball down the middle, they're playing it to the outside of him. Well, that piece of indiscipline from Tom O'Sullivan hands the opportunity to Adrian Marin, and Marin does what he's in the team to do, kick the score that keeps Sligo in touch. And with 20 minutes to go, they haven't gone away. No, certainly haven't. Yeah, that was a, a confident free taken there uh, compared to the one at the far end of the field. And, you know, mistakes like that and, and, and bad defending, diving in when they shouldn't, it can be costly, and, and, and both teams will have to be careful of that as the game comes to the end. And Sligo about to uh, make a change. Number 21, Gary Gohan is about to come in. And if you think David Kelly or Stephen Cohen are fast, wait on the Gary Gohan arrives. Paul Galvin looking very bemused, that free gun against him. The Kerry supporters not impressed either. As Alan Costello is held up by Donica Walsh, looking for Cohen. Good covering by Mike McCarthy. That's where his quality three-time All-Star shone through. And now Tommy Griffin. <laughs> Kerry play keep ball inside their own half. Remember, they do have the wind. Trying to work it into a position where they can hit that full forward line. Darrow O'Shea decides to let the ball do the work. Jonathan Davey does really well. He took man and ball, and the referee, Sil Doyle, did not like the manner of the challenge. And to say Kevin Walsh is incensed would be an understatement. Yeah, we'd, hopefully we'll see that again, but I, I think that was a wee bit harsh, all right. He went up and he broke the ball down, but it's just one of those decisions it's given. You have to get on with it. Yeah, Sligo need, here we have it again. Uh, yeah, that was a fair, fair, a fair break of the ball. I think the referee got that one right. Well, no shortage of activity in the dugouts. Kerry are bringing in Darren O'Sullivan, who's replacing Donica Walsh. The captain's armband will have been exchanged in the process. And Alan Costello is the Sligo player who's been taken out. And in comes Gary Gohan from Turla Strand, a man with pace to burn. So Kerry lead by a point. Sean O'Sullivan. Kicking into the Horns end, he's given it plenty of height. It's going to be close. And despite the efforts of uh, Tony Taylor, the umpire felt that ball went out on the full, I do believe. Yeah, I think a bit of a misunderstanding in the defence there. The keeper should have been should have been calling and directing whether that uh, the defender should have went for that ball or not. In some cases, with no calling, that can be costly. Well, this uh, Sligo's third game of the championship. Narrow defeat to Galway. But that win over Tipperary last weekend down at Semple Stadium has given their season real momentum again. And they have given every bit as good as they've got so far in this match. But we're now at the crucial juncture, the crossroads. 
And that's a very poor kick from Paul Galvin, who's given possession right back to Sligo again. Paul McGovern driving down into the Kerry half. Support inside from Tony Taylor. Sean Davy also once managed to ride the challenge of Scanlon. Quick hands to Gohan, who's hit hard and fair by Tom O'Sullivan. Back to Stephen Cohen. Wide on the right hand side. Well, the Kerry defence closed ranks there, and Sligo could find no way through. Yeah, there was a lot of Kerry bodies there, and you know Sligo took the wrong option this time, uh, trying to go through the middle, which there was no way it was going to happen. And good defender by Kerry, and and, and, the, and the wrong choice by Sligo. The referee, Sil Doyle, has made his way across towards Darrow O'Shea here and uh, Sean Davey. And a yellow card for Kerry's veteran midfielder. I think Dara protesting it's no more than good, clean fun, but the linesman, I think, on this near side, Mikey Collins from Cork, spotted something out of the corner of his eye. And the game gets underway once more. Galvin. Well, when Kerry have needed players to roll up their sleeves and do the dirty work, he has been in there in the thick of it, but he's been penalised again. Sligo committing bodies into attack. One of them is Charlie Harrison. Isolated, though, on the far side. Support from Sean Davey now. Men queuing up. One of them, Gary Gohan. Telegraphed his intentions, though. A second bite for Davey. Fine save by Dermot Murphy. Stretching his six foot three inch frame there up over the crossbar and preventing what looked like a certain score here's Tom O'Sullivan now nobody prepared to give an inch not least to Paul McGovern he's knocked man and ball out over the line and with 15 minutes to go I think it's safe to say we can assume nothing Joe yeah, certainly not. Once again, great, great work by the Sligo players. You know, they're chasing the Harry and, uh, for every ball, putting uh, Kerry under pressure, and here they now on, on the attack. Stephen Cohn, he's got a yard or two on McCarthy. Thought about the shot. A decoy run of sorts from Mark Brehany. But in the end, the shot lacked any real conviction. And Kerry can tidy up. Jack O'Connor animated, encouraging Porrick Reedy. This is Aidan O'Mahony. It's a time for cool heads now to Darren O'Sullivan. Linking up with Tommy Walsh. Oh, Walsh, though, was outnumbered two to one, and Sean Davey caught Tommy Walsh. Referee saw very little wrong with it, and away goes Charlie Harrison. This is real championship football now. Brehany, Harrison again. Support from Gary Gohan. Kerry's defence trying to organize themselves and fall back to block up the channels david kelly change of direction and mike mccarthy like a man who's never been away back there to tidy up yeah certainly any old uh, we've seen tommy walsh taking a knock from sean davies sean to be a seasoned campaigner and used all his physical strength and uh, caught tommy on the blind side but once again slay goes after after missing one or two what should be easy chances for them and the worst thing about it is that they, they kept the ball in play and now Kerry will be, uh, will, will be looking to attack Tommy's back up on his feet and they recovered from that well just one point uh, for Kerry and or for Sligo rather in the last uh, 17 minutes as Kerry make a change this is Brian Sheehan from the St Mary's Club in Carris Iveen man who's been taken off Sean O'Sullivan And it's at times like this in the final quarter that the switches and the changes will be so crucial. Yeah, and these boys, the important thing is when a sub does come on that he gets onto the ball straight away. And no sooner have I said it that Brian Sheehan is going for a ball and is, and is fouled. You know, a player can come on and maybe doesn't touch the ball for the first five or ten minutes and suddenly the game's over and he's made no impact. So it, it is important that they get onto the ball as soon as they come on. Well, Ross Donovan uh, closed the door there in the face of Paul Galvin as he came down along that right-hand side. Sligo are making another change. This is number 26, Kenneth Sweeney from Giva. 
going in to replace Stephen Cohen as Cooper kicks from the corner. Didn't uh, curl in sufficiently, even with that breeze at his back. As we see Paul Galvin, yeah, it's Paul Galvin. sent uh, hurdling by Donovan. Yeah, Paul tried to play the ball on the ground, but the Stego man was having nothing of it. And once again, Gooch got another free that he missed there. And you know, that's itching away at his confidence all the time. And uh, it certainly can't be helping it. Well, 10 of the uh, Kerry team that started this game tonight also started the All-Ireland final last year. No shortage of experience out there. But you wonder, have they gone to the well one time too often? They're a point in front here, though, and looking now to turn the screw. Sligo having none of it. Tony Taylor popping up there in the right place at the right time. Now Sean Davy, who's really put himself about since he came in at half-time. And Charlie Harrison fouled in the end. Yeah, we see Kerry's frustration again, over-elaborating that time and trying, and trying to take too much out of the ball when it was easier just to put the ball over the bar uh, uh, from the outside. A yellow card for Seamus Scanlon, and Kerry haven't scored now, Joe, for 15 minutes. Yeah. It, it's that type of a game that's going from end end. Both teams are making mistakes. They're taking the wrong options, but you know we still have a long, long way to go. And one or two points will make an awful difference here. There you see Slago going into the going into the tackle and losing the ball. Thomas O'Shea the same. They have to keep using the ball, pushing the ball before the tackle, and spreading it out wide. Thomas O'Shea just uh, taking an awful lot of time there. Will Kerry get uh, a second chance? Here's Darrow O'Shea, caught by Sean Davy. Gets the move, game moving quickly, though. Well, the smallest thing could make the biggest difference here. O'Shea again, just sitting in the pocket at centre back, trying to drive through. You get the feeling now, the distinct impression that any semblance of a game plan or a strategy is long gone. Kerry have got a free. And there you can see Kerry almost a quarter of an hour. Sligo, something similar. As this game starts to become bogged down just a little. And Sean, Sean Davy yeah. from Curry has picked up that yellow card and he really has brought a physical presence to the Sligo midfield since he came in at the break. Yeah, that, uh, I presume that's for the, uh, the challenge on, uh, on Tommy Walsh. Yeah, but here we have a, a free now which would suit, hopefully, for his point of view, will suit Brian Sheehan in the perfect position for him. But Brian Sheehan, who has honed and perfected his free-taking technique at the St. Mary's Club in Caris Iveen. Same club, of course, as the great Morris Fitzgerald. Sheehan lands that free, Kerry lead by two, and are about to introduce Michal Quirk from the Kerens O'Rahillies Club here in Tralee. No doubt about it now, they're looking to push on and close this game out. It's from here on in the last ten minutes, you know, when everybody does the simple things well, not give the ball away, put it into space and support each other, and that means hard work now. Some of the boys, all the boys here on both, on both sides are going to have to work hard. So Miol Quirk is in, and Darrow O'Shea is on the ball. Have Sligo got something left now, or will Kerry push on? O'Sullivan, a teasing ball, looking for Tommy Walsh, but while the idea was right, the execution was poor, as Philip Green plays a little bit of football. And now Jonathan Davy. Sligo badly need a score now. Noel Maguire outnumbered by Kerry men and in the end gets his free Eamon O'Hara Sligo need him now to take this game by the scruff of the neck Sean Davy, his old training ground partner takes the pass Davy, blocked by Mike McCarthy who I think just happened to be standing in the path of that shot and with seven minutes to go Kerry leading by two points 
let's hear the thoughts of David Brady in the studio. As Joe said, I don't think this game is going to take, it's not going to be a piece of magic that's going to win this game. It's plain, simple, hard work. I think Sean Davey had a chance there to put the ball over the bar, bring it to a one-point game, get his crowd behind him. It's vital now that Sligo start getting kickouts. The last, the last six, kick, six kickouts in a row, and it's putting pressure straight back on them. The next 10, 20 seconds is going to be vital, never mind the next, last eight minutes for Sligo. They need to get a point and come back into the game, and then it's going to be anyone's. But as Joe said, it's about simple, hard, hard work. Just one score for Sligo in the last 23 minutes and David Kelly is off target with the 45. There are six and a half minutes of normal time left. And while the game may be there for the taking, Sligo at this moment looking unable to take that next step. Yeah, there's more and more mistakes being made by both teams here now. And as David rightly said, it's the cool head does the simple thing in the next few minutes. Don't over-elaborate uh, and something might come of it. Jack O'Connor making another change. Aidan O'Mahony making way as Daniel Bohan from the Austin Stacks Club here in Tralee comes in. Player who made a big impact in the championship at fullback last summer. In for these final five minutes of normal time. Kerry's full back line now, looking a lot more comfortable than they did in the first half. As Thomas O'Shea hits an inch-perfect pass to Paul Galvin. Now Darrow O'Shea, and a first touch for Bohan. Will Kerry's substitutions and the fresh legs make all the difference? Well, Sligo, who had to dig deep to beat Tipperary last Saturday. Now have to do it all over again. Here's Adrian Marin. David Kelly moves out of his way, and the challenge from Big Michal Quirk doing nothing for Adrian Marin's concentration there. The sight of the uh, Kerry substitute, six foot seven, 17 and a half stone, hurdling towards him. Checking his stopwatch there, Kevin Walsh. It will have told him that time is of the essence now. And you just begin to wonder, Joe, where these Sligo scores are going to come from that they need to, to get back into this game again. Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come from the middle of the field. And we see our half-backs here pushing that forward. It's, it's the next phase. What did they do? Who did they pass it to? Davey's the going to go all the way himself. Jonathan Davey! He's hit the deck, and the referee, Sil Doyle, moving in very very slowly and that's a penalty well Sil Doyle wanted to be absolutely sure before he spread his arms and he has given a penalty in fairness it, it is Sligo like halfbacks uh, made forward runs th three or four times a day and or stopped further out the field but this time he broke in behind the whole defence and certainly he, he was impeded when about to shoot and, and, and the referee's 100%. Now, who can hold the nerve here, the taker or the keeper? Well, before David Kelly gets a chance to compose himself, a little bit of jostling going on away to his right-hand side. This is the biggest kick in David Kelly's life against Murphy. <laughs> Dear McMurphy, not for the first time, has saved Kerry. And our Sligo's heart's about to be broken one more time. Yeah, yeah, C certainly David didn't waste no time in going for it, but he hit the ball uh, to a perfect height for a keeper. But in fairness to David Murphy, it was a great save, and, and it won that Sligo will probably rue before this is over. Well, tempers beginning to fray there. The rain beginning to fall for the first time here at Austin Stack Park in Tralee. We've had drama, excitement, entertainment aplenty. And it looks like one of those evenings when Kerry may just ride their luck or have Sligo got another kick left. Kenneth Sweeney, he's going to go all the way. Sweeney sets up the grandstand finish. The Sligo substitute from Giva had only one thing in his mind there. 
and we just might have another twist in the tail. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, as far as Kerry's concerned, this was a bad, bad, bad mistake by Tommy Griffin, giving the ball away. Here we see the penalty again. It was placed down the middle, and I'm not saying it was an easy save. There's none of them easy, but uh, the ball was cleared, and, and uh, Sligo will root that again. Well, gloves are being thrown in from left, right, and centre now. Sligo are breathing on the necks of Kerry. They're reeling them back in, slowly but surely. And if they get one more score and manage to hang on, we will have extra time here at Austin Stack Park in Tralee. Kerry have put 13 men back into their own half. They'll want to uh, put this game to bed in regulation time. Gohan trying to control that ball in a very tight corner. And between Michal Quirk and uh, Tomás O'Shea, they managed to keep Sligo at bay. Joe Kernan. Yeah, for the man of the match. It's, I think it's that time of the game, all right. A minute to go, how time flies. <laughs> It certainly does. Man of the match. In fairness, David Kelly for Sligo was magnificent uh, the whole way through, but one man stood head and shoulders above everything. That was Paul Galvin, and he's our man of the match today. When they needed somebody to stand up, Paul was the man that did it. So Paul Galvin, who's had an eventful summer on his return to the Kerry team this evening, is Joe Kernan's selection for man of the match. A match that isn't over yet, not by a long shot. We're almost into stoppage time. Mike McCarthy... What a reintroduction to championship football it's been for him this evening. Now Tom O'Sullivan, still full of running the left corner back. Sligo hanging on for dear life. One more score for Kerry. And it would be hard to see a way back for Sligo. Quirk to Sheehan. Galvin wants and gets. Galvin wide on the right but it just might be as good as a score. We'll have at least two minutes of additional time. Yeah, and the, game, and the game's not over yet. You know, uh, Sligo have made a couple of openings uh, throughout the match, and they have possession again here straight away, and the, they're on the way up the field. Kick out taking short by Sligo, but Tony Taylor has lost out to Darren O'Sullivan, and Neil Ewing, who's already on a yellow card, coming across Darren O'Sullivan, and has his name noted. He's walking a very, very thin line now. Mike, sometimes subs don't uh, don't get credit for working hard. And Michal Quirk has come in here and made two two good tackles or two good challenges when Sligo looked like scoring. And, uh, and certainly he deserves a lot of credit for his work rate since he came on. Well, Kerry, who have never lost a game in the qualifiers, can they close this out? That's a huge kick from way out on the far side from Daniel Bohan. Again, he kills the ball, and Sligo will have to build right from their own half. But Sligo have given Kerry the fright of their lives here, Joe. Yeah, and that's what we expected from Sligo. You know, Kerry, this game will do Kerry the world of good. They'll have a few more faces back. This will help their confidence, but certainly Sligo are one of, the, one of those teams that you didn't want to meet. And as Joe has been saying all evening long, the longer Sligo hang in there, the harder it is to put them away. Taylor has to go back out, but Sligo have possession. They need to make this attack count. Sweeney. Just hanging out of that ball for dear life now. Surrounded by Kerry men. And Tomas O'Shea bursting out in typically inspirational fashion. And fouled. And is that to be Sligo's last chance? Remember, they led at half-time by two points. This is typical Tom O'Shea cut driving out of defence. He was caught high there, but it's, it's not like uh, Tom O'Shea laid down. So a yellow card for Adrian Marin. The cards have been coming thick and fast in this second half. By and large, it's been a good sporting game, but the hits have been flying in but that's what you expect in round three of the All-Ireland qualifiers it's all over Kerry get the job done 
They maintain their unbeaten record in the qualifiers on the night the championship football returned to Tralee. And they now move on to round four. Jack O'Connor breathes a sigh of relief. Sligo summer is over. They will fly home tonight, though, with their heads held high. Kevin Walsh and his team have done all they could. Kerry, on the other hand, will they now have some unfinished business to attend to next weekend? They have survived yet again in this year's championship. Remember, this was only the second meeting of these teams in championship football. We wondered, would it be worth waiting for? Yes, it was. Full-time scoreline here at Austin Stack Park and Tralee. It's ended. Kerry, 14 points. Sligo, one goal in 10. What heartbreak it was in the end for Sligo. So close. Never will they come as close as one point. The penalty missed from David Kelly, who had scored the goal in the first half. We're back with analysis. And we will see though if Kerry had the best game and we will let you know during the week which match we will have next Saturday throw in time to be confirmed. Here's the score breakdown. Kerry winning by a single point against Sligo. 14 points to a goal in 10. And of course the misses for Sligo. How they will rue the misses, particularly that penalty miss and the amount of wides and the amount of shots that dropped in short. The chances were there for Sligo despite the fact of having less possession to win this game. Peter, should Sligo have won this? Well, uh, they had their chances and they'll be bitterly disappointed that 12 wides you know, tells its own story. But, uh, you know, who would have thought, you know, this is the second week in a row that, that Kerry have been humbled by lesser opposition. Uh, Sligo are a Division 4 side. They played their football, league football Division 4 this year and it was with Kerry who were hanging on uh, by their fingernails at the end of the game. But uh, I think a bit of uh, composure and a, and a bit of creativity up front was all that Sligo were, were missing. David Kelly, who was first class in the first half, uh, in the second half, you know, he wasn't creating the chances or uh, really had him in his pocket for, for most of the game. But the, yes, they, they had enough ball in the second half uh, and their decision making here again, Sean Davey, uh, either kicking it over the bar or laying it off was the better option. But time after time, at the crucial stages, they, they done that. So yes, uh, moral victory goes to, to Sligo, but a big opportunity missed. And David, when it came to the penalty, you were actually shouting in here to put it over the bar at that stage of the game. Why? Because <coughs> the whole thing behind it is you're showing the amount of confidence you have and saying, right, we don't mind being one point behind. Like Sligo, it was a great run by Jonathan Nevy, who was absolutely fantastic. I thought, you know, has become of age today, and the runs he made forward. The speed of him, you know, took him ahead of the players, and he was taken down and it was a penalty. But when you have six minutes left, if you put the ball over the bar, I know you can say, right, a goal would have won it. You think with all the soccer players that happens, like, you know, I wouldn't blame Paul Kelly on it. Yeah. But the thing was, they'd be a point down, but there was five and a half minutes still to play, and Sligo had the momentum. No. I just think it's such a big decision to get it or to miss it. But to miss it, you, you always lose the game. Yeah, well, always. of course it's a big decision, but... Um uh, I think he's, he had to go for a goal. They were playing against the Breeze. Um, Kelly's a confident player. Um, I, I it wasn't a confident penalty, though, was well, it? Well, I think he'd done the right. He made the right decision by, by going for a goal. My God, that Kerry, you know, if that penalty had went in, Sligo would have won the game. So I think he made the right decision. Uh, goalkeeper made a good save, albeit he hit it at, at the wrong height again. I think the best way to beat Dermot Murphy is low, keep it on, on, on the ground. So. Uh, the other thing that what the penalty did show again, of course, was the lack of, of pace in the centre of, of the Kerry defence. There's no way should you know a, a wing half back come straight through the middle of your defence. And, and numer and numerous times it half. happened all day. They said that once the Kerry guys seen the likes of Jonathan Navy on the ball, foul him 40 yards out, 50 yards out, break the ball down there and don't let them go forward. Now Joe Kernan did pick Paul Galvin as man of the match. We'll be talking to him in a minute. Let's just see a little bit of the things that Paul Galvin gave to Kerry on his return after suspension. Well, he, he was always uh, a threat, even from the very start. He was one player. I think Paul let, uh, felt after the, the court game in which he was sent off, he, he was you know, badly let down, and uh, he was determined to prove a point today. And by God, he, he done it, driving surge and runs. Um, but what he also done, he was able to win his own, his own kickouts. You know, and for someone uh, not the biggest in the half-forward line, uh, great spring, great determination to, to fetch his own ball time after time. Yeah, like in all fairness, I have to put my hand up. You know, it's great to see a, a player like this and at, at what he's gone through and the criticism he's got to come out and produce the goods by playing football. Um, any decision today that was went his way, he deserved it. Like, at the end of the day, it, it takes... I, I think it's hard, rough and tough players to win the game. Curry are not nice fellas and Paul Gavin is a pure example of a, of a rough and tumble footballer. OK, well, let's hear from the man of the match, Paul Galvin. 
Well, congratulations, Paul Galvin. You are our GA man of the match. Sean Walsh, Vice Chairman of the Munster Council, is here now to present you with your award. Paul, the skin of your teeth. What was it like out there? Was there much panic in the Kerry team? Um, yeah, we, we were, it was probably a bit too close for comfort, but I don't think there was any panic at any stage because, you know, the, the, the kind of the buzzword at halftime was not to panic by, by Jack, and, and we knew, you know, given the way we came into the game, that you know we haven't been firing on all cylinders, and that it might, it might be a dog fight, and it turned out that way. So I think it wasn't so much panic, but you know we were definitely hanging on. And Paul, what everyone wants to know is why aren't you firing on all cylinders? I don't know. I'm not too sure really. Or so we're, we're just trying to find a bit of form. I think. I think you know possibly we've been on the road a, f a few years together, and um, you know we're just we're just looking for that bit of form. But I mean, you know, the qualifiers are always tough games, and I don't think there's ever an easy game in the qualifiers. And these Sligo teams, I watched them play Galway, and they were very unlucky not to beat Galway. So I mean, you know, like no, you're probably being dis we're probably being disrespectful to Sligo in a way because they're quite a good team, you know. You said there you've been on the road for a while. Is mental fatigue a factor? I don't think so. Not for me anyway. I, I haven't been on the road in a while, so. I don't think it's that big a factor personally, but I mean, yeah, well, I know we, we, we brought in legs towards the end that made Daniel Bohan and Darren Sullivan, you know, brought a bit of freshness to it in the second half. And uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's just, it's just, you know, just got to fight, fight, or, fight our way out of it and keep, keep going and, and, and find our form, you know. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Thanks very much. Well, Peter and David will be telling us why Kerry aren't firing on all cylinders straight after this. Carrier in the fourth round of the qualifiers, only just after a one-point victory over Sligo here in Tralee today. So tell us, why are they not firing on all cylinders? I think there's a, a severe lack of confidence there at the minute. And, and no one epitomises that as much as a Gooch. Um, on, on his day, he can win a game on his own. But out there today, again, maybe it's the absence of, of Donaghy, who, who knows. But uh, for a player with so much experience and who's been there, done it before... Um, he, he will be extremely disappointed with, with his own performance. Now, that's not to say that his season's going to click in, into gear when it really matters, but uh, once again, uh, for, for, again, for a player of such ability, he, he'll be fiercely disappointed. But don't the odds have to be stretching now, David, that Kerry can suddenly find the form because they've been playing so poorly so far this season? The, the, but the secret is, Matt, they're winning. And, you know, that's, that's an important equation. If you keep on winning, it's awful hard to lose. And if you're losing all the time, and, you know, Sligo have, have and been in the habit of losing championship games, they don't know what it takes to win. It's a small difference. But you know what? Um, I just wouldn't like to be the team that does play this Curry team when they do click. You know, we all say, we might say at the end of the year, oh, they didn't click at all. But you know what? They have the quality, and they have players that's not even playing well, like Peter said, the Gooch. But, you know, they're, they're able to do it. And I'd say, the big thing today, I think, was the substitutes they brought on, the likes of Brian Sheehan. Um, you know, for the free-taking, because the coach wasn't going well at the free-taking, and Quirk as well. The subs come on and made a difference. OK, I think we may have now the Sligo manager, Kevin Walsh, with us. Well, Kevin, so very close. What is the feeling in the dressing room now? I'd say devastation is the word. Um, you know, I think we threw everything in the kitchen sink there in the second half, and it took us a while to get into the game, and, you know, I think every time we came forward, there was a few little... I don't know, I'll, I'll have to look at the video again, but... I don't know where the rules come into play, but I'd like to see a few things again. I, I certainly question an awful decisions out there today. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to just take it back maybe when I look at it maybe in a, in a, in a better light. But um, I just felt there was a huge amount of stuff that went against it when we, were, when we were pushing forward and stuff like that. And I'm very disappointed for the lads, you know. They threw everything, the kitchen sink out of there. And OK, Pindley was there for us to take it. We didn't do it. Um, I don't blame David Kelly one bit. He was a thorn in the side all day for Kerry and even the last few matches. He's a great fella. Um, he's going to take that to the chin as well. Look, at, I'll be standing shoulder to shoulder with these boys. Um, I'm thoroughly proud of them. We went down to the very last week. A fierce, tough assignment came out of that. And I think you're he, he, here again today. And even the plane was late. Maybe that's not the point of us. But look, at, they're a great bunch of lads. And uh, I couldn't ask for any more than 100%. But exactly when you had that penalty chance, do you think this is it? No, I never think that against Kerry. Um, there was still a few minutes left. It certainly was a way of maybe asking a lot of questions of them. Um, you know, if the penalty was put away, who's to say they wouldn't have come back and got three points in the row? That's the way they are. Um, but in fairness, I mean, you probably saw the way even the penalty was taken and even David Kelly went over and got his own rebound. I mean, that's the type of fellas they are at the moment. They're just, you know, another fellow would, would just put the hands in the hips and, 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 and stand there and feeling sorry for himself. They're not that way. Um, I just think it's great for the lads to, to get a confidence boost out of that, but they're desperately disappointed. OK, Kevin, thanks. Last word on this to you, Peter. How proud should Sligo be of their performance today? No, very much so. I concur with everything that Kevin Walsh has said, and he deserves great credit with what he's done with this Sligo team. He was spot on about a few decisions that did go again. them. I thought there was two or three were very harsh. But there was about a 10-minute spell midway through the second half 
when they lost their own comp uh, composure, they lost their discipline, they give away silly frees, and even when they did win frees, they give away a few short frees, you know, stupid mistakes. So they'll look, they'll reflect back on that uh, and think, my God, what were we doing for that 10 minute spell? But great, great credit to them, uh, and very unfortunate that they didn't come away with at least a draw here today. Okay, I got to let you know about some things that are coming up here on TV3 and our sports coverage. We have Championship Throw in next Friday and Saturday. And then tomorrow, before we have our live match, we have part of what we are, the football code, at 2.25. But then we are going to Galway tomorrow for the eagerly anticipated Connacht Senior Football Final between Galway and Mayo at Pierce Stadium. Our coverage starts at half three with a throw-in at four. And then next weekend, we are going to have the best of the round four qualifiers. The draw will be made tomorrow night. We will pick, we will pick the match to be played that will be on on Saturday. And then we will get, let you know the time during the week. So, my thanks now to both Peter and to David for their analysis throughout the game and what has been a thrilling encounter here in Tralee today. So we hope you enjoyed it and we hope you join us for tomorrow's match. Until then, have a good evening.